Okay, this week we are finishing the book of Ruth, which we started last week. Um, and our, our Bible card for the book of Ruth kind of summarizes the whole thing. And we find out about her and Boaz and why that's important to our, um, to our Christian belief. Because it is very important. And this kind of shows the map from Moab, where Moab relates to Bethlehem, where she lived. Which puts us, this is Moab here, and then Bethlehem is over in that area. Um, when we left it last week, Naomi and Ruth had arrived in Bethlehem, and they had gone to the property Naomi owned um, because it was her husband's property, but he's dead, and it's just the two women living there. And there were very few occupational options for anybody at this time of history, male or female. Basically, you could be a farmer or a farmer's wife, or a shopkeeper or a shopkeeper's wife. And there wasn't a lot of other options. Uh, so two widows living alone didn't have a lot of options. Farm work is heavy physical labor, so a woman, even if they had some farmland, land, the two women could not farm it. Um, so Naomi said, we got to do something to live. So uh, Ruth, I'm too old. I'll do the housework, I'll, I'll keep the house kind of stuff. You go out and you find a field where they are harvesting barley, because it's barley harvest time. And um, in Israel, according to the Mosaic Law, they would harvest the middles of the fields, but they would leave the corners unharvested. And once they harvested, they weren't supposed to go back and pick up anything that fell or that ripened later. The corners and the things that fell were to be left for the poor people to go and to harvest so they wouldn't starve to death. That was their form of welfare. <laughs> well, and, and in Israel, when the Israelites first arrived in Israel, every family received a farm. So though this is a couple hundred years later, still most people owned their own farm. <coughs> but there were cases like Naomi and Ruth where life had just hit them hard. So Ruth went out, she found this field where they were harvesting, and she started um, picking up what the harvesters left behind, what they had, had accidentally dropped. And um, I don't have a Boaz. Uh, the owner of the field was named Boaz, and he came to see what was going on. He was a really rich man, and he was, came to see what was going on in his fields and uh, how the harvest was going and everything, and he noticed Ruth out in the field. So he called his foreman to him, and he asked, who's that, and what's going on? And the foreman said, that is Ruth, the lady that came with Naomi. And um, she's been working out here all day. She took one little break where she had a drink of water and sat in the shade, but she's been working out here all day and been working really hard uh, to pick up the gleanings for her and, and Naomi. And Boaz said, you know, I have heard how kind she has been to Naomi. What I want you to do is you tell my harvesters to get really clumsy. I want them to accidentally drop more barley than they would normally. Uh, make sure they drop it in front of her so she gets it. So at the end of the day, or at lunchtime actually, she came. She's been working this hard. I think she has that much more than Well, it just depends on how much. Uh, is left between. Uh, at lunchtime, he had her come to the table and eat with his servants, and he gave her an extra portion when she went to leave. So when she got home, Naomi said, where did you go that you were able to glean this much food? And Ruth explained to, to this guy over here named Boaz, I harvested in his field. And Naomi said, oh, I know Boaz. 
He's actually a relative, a cousin, distant, something or other. You know what? You keep harvesting in his field for the rest of the season. And she did. Um, at the end of the season, uh, they were threshing. Now, threshing is when you beat the grain so the chaff falls off of the, uh, the heads of grain and then you would winnow, which is usually part of the, the uh, threshing, uh, the winnowing, you throw the grain up in the air and the wind blows all the chaff and the straw and all that away and the heavy grain falls to the ground. So all you have is grain then. So they, usually they would have a big party for the threshing time. Naomi said, you know what? I'm not going to live forever. Um, we need to do something more permanent for you, Ruth. We need to provide you with a permanent home. So this is what I want you to do. And Ruth did what she told her to. She went to Boaz's threshing party. But she kind of stayed in the back so no one saw her there. And when he went to sleep, uh, she found out where he was, and she went to where he was sleeping, and she uncovered his feet, and she lay down and covered up with his blanket at his feet. And he woke up in the middle of the night, and he said, there's someone at my feet. Why is there someone at my feet? There shouldn't be anyone at my feet. And his asking who's there woke her up, and she said, cover me up. You're a close relative. You're supposed to take care of me. So he said, okay, yeah, he, he let her use his blanket, and in the morning he gave her um, some extra, some more food, sent her home, said, you just be patient, I'll take care of things. So he went to the city, city gate. Now the city gate is where all the leaders of the city would gather to do business. That's where all the important people sat. So he went there, and he saw a relative coming by, and he said, come here, I need to talk to you. He said, you know that Naomi has come back from Moab, and her husband's dead, and her sons are dead, and she's completely left alone. She has a piece of property that she needs someone to buy so she can be supplied uh, for her, the rest of her life. Um, you are a closer relative than I am, so you have the right to buy it first. And the guy said, okay, sure, I'll buy it. He said, okay, when you do, you got to marry Ruth. Because Ruth is also one of our relatives' widows. And he said, uh, I can't do that. That will mess up my inheritance if I marry Ruth. And I kind of think maybe his wife would have objected <laughs> if he had married Ruth. Um, but whatever, he said that will mess up my inheritance. So Not incest, uh, polygamy. Yeah. It was legal to have more than one spouse at the time. Um, Boaz said, okay. They're, they're like, they're related by Mary, marriage. He was her, her, Ruth's husband's second cousin or something like that. So yeah, but no. Yes, by inheritance, but no by blood. They weren't related. Um, the relatives <coughs> said, uh, you go ahead. You buy the property, Boaz. So they made a deal, and Boaz went to Naomi and Ruth, and he asked Ruth to marry him, and they got married. So Ruth is now completely taken care of. But she's important, one, because she took care of her mother-in-law, um, which is a good, compassionate thing to do. Um, two, because she served Naomi's God, remember? Last week we talked about that Ruth said, whatever God you serve, I am serving your God. I, I don't want to go back to my gods. I want your God. So she is serving the God of Israel. Um, and it, this is an important lesson to us for God's provision. But there's a mo more important thing. She had a baby. And that baby's name was Obed. And Naomi got to be the, um, the nanny. I had to think of the word, the nanny, for Obed, and helped take care of him. And now Naomi is taken care of. But Obed grew up. And he got married, and he had a son named Jesse. 
And Jesse grew up and got married, and he actually had eight sons and at least two daughters. One of those sons, his youngest, was named David. He grew up and he became King David, who is the ancestor of Jesus Christ. So Ruth is very, a very important woman, this woman who went through poverty and uh, the widowhood and all of that. She's a very important woman. She is David's great-grandmother. So let's sing our song. <coughs> behold, behold, I stand at the door and Bible, Jesus said, I'm knocking. If you open your door to your heart, I will come in. So, I thought it was a song about what I do for a living. <laughs>